A warm greeting, today is Sunday, July 2, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this short video, I will be talking about what we can expect in the Atlantic region in terms of cyclonic activity during the month of July. Remember that June started quite active with the formation of two tropical storms. First, Tropical Storm Brett, which moved over the Caribbean waters and affected some islands in the Lesser Antilles. Additionally, we had the development of Tropical Storm Cindy, which fortunately took a trajectory northeast of the Caribbean and dissipated before reaching Bermuda. Currently, the National Hurricane Center has not identified any areas with potential cyclonic development in the next seven days. We expect a rather inactive period in the coming weeks. This is partly due to the El Niño phenomenon and the strong shear winds that persist over the Caribbean, as well as the cyclonic activity we have seen in the eastern Pacific region. In fact, the development of one or two additional cyclones is expected in the next 10 days in the Pacific. Typically, when we see cyclonic activity in the eastern Pacific, it is much more difficult to see cyclone formation in the Atlantic. It appears that this will be the case for at least the next two weeks. By mid-July, we will start to observe several strong tropical waves coming from Africa. Although the conditions may not be favorable for development until late July or early August, according to some indications we will see in the next few minutes. Another reason why the next two weeks are expected to be inactive is that the Madden-Julian Oscillation will remain quite active in the Central and Western Pacific region, while conditions in the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean are unfavorable for tropical cyclone formation. It is forecasted that the focus of cyclone activity will remain in the Eastern Pacific region at least until mid-July. Additionally, remember that July is one of the least active months in the Atlantic Ocean Basin. However, in some hurricane seasons, we see the formation of cyclones to the east of the United States and in the Gulf of Mexico. And although in fewer numbers, we also see some cyclones forming to the east of the Caribbean and south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. However, the occurrence is extremely minimal, and on average, in the month of July, we only see one to two tropical storms forming in the Atlantic, mostly towards the east of the United States and in the Gulf of Mexico. By mid-July, we will be attentive to the possible occurrence of strong tropical waves coming from Africa, and the ensemble members of the European model maintain a low probability of 10 to 15% for the development of at least one tropical depression between the Caribbean and Africa. This probability is extremely low, and remember that as long as the eastern Pacific remains active and the El Niño shear winds move through the Caribbean region, it will be very difficult to see cyclonic development. If we look at the long term, some models, such as the European model, are suggesting that during the last week of July and the first week of August, we may have better development opportunities between the Caribbean and Africa, as well as to the east of the United States. Preliminarily, and considering that these long-term forecasts have a lot of margin for error, it is possible that the next real development opportunity we have in the Atlantic will be towards the end of July or the beginning of August. In the meantime, we can be calm in the Atlantic region, and here at Hurricane Info, I will remain vigilant in case there is any significant change in this forecast. Remember to subscribe to my channel to stay informed during this hurricane season. I hope you all have an excellent week. Goodbye for now.